I'm going to make this like pretty fast and then just take a lot of questions because I'm not really sure what you guys want me to talk about. But all right, do any of you guys know about Filecoin? Do you know about IPFS? Okay, so it's the same, same team behind IPFS is working on Filecoin. And basically the goal is to, so to do what Bitcoin did for money to like storage, like Dropbox or Amazon Web Services. Um, so basically, there's a whole bunch of components to this system, but it's a, a way that people could share their hard drive space and get paid for that. It's an exchange so people could make bids and uh, take offers. So it's like a whole marketplace. And the whole goal of this is to create like a really low cost, like decentralized and um, just more robust alternative to like Amazon or the places where like data is currently being stored. Um, so I've been reading this white paper, which is like a huge document. Um, they're talking about exactly how it works and stuff. So I'm, I'm still wrapping my head around it, but basically, I'm not gonna get too deep into this, but basically like the big breakthroughs that they've made are proof of space and proof of space time. So what that means is like proving that you're actually storing a unique copy of some data and proving that you're doing that over a period of time. So these, this is like the really important breakthrough that makes this whole thing possible. Um, I can talk more about how that works or I'll come back to that later if you guys want. Also, the reason I'm talking about this is because I think it's really relevant to what we're doing here. And like other people were touching, this on touching on this before, like how do you incentivize something like this to get built? Like you can't really rely on volunteer labor. Um, and also like Julian has been hosting wiki.mesh, which, which is awesome, but it's like one person, person hosting a site and it goes down and that's totally like antithetical to the whole idea of a mesh, which is resilient and distributed. So Filecoin just like is really relevant in those ways. Um, specifically like, yeah, just specifically like incentivizing uh, a whole network. Um, does that make sense? Like, is there anything you guys want me to talk more about? Any questions? Yeah, but it's not based on Bitcoin. It's like a whole new. So that's like the the coin is the way miners get rewarded. You you earn Filecoin by hosting people's files, and then you can sell that for money or, you know, use it to buy storage space. Stakes. So that's what I was talking before, like the proof of space and the proof of space time. Basically, like the the reason this is, or some of the challenges when make when making a system like this are, like what's called the Sybil attack, which is where a lot of people, or one person claims to be a ton of people posting like, this data, but they're really just storing it on one copy, but they get to reap the rewards of like a thousand copies of it. So the proof of space ensures that each time you're, you're saying you're hosting a copy, it truly is like a, a unique space, a unique copy taking up that amount of data on like a physical disk somewhere. And then proof of space time, prevents people from like saying that they're hosting it when in reality they're like creating the data from some algorithm or like just fetching it from another server. Like this, this really ensures that people have the data and they, they have as much of it as they say they have. I, I get into conversations about Bitcoin and mesh routers all the time, blockchain, <clears throat> and I, I can never um, figure out how the the router could possibly run a, a, a proof of work or whatever. The, the idea, wait, how a router could run a proof yeah, of work? Yeah, the, the idea is to incentivize people to, to put a router on their roof by, by mm. having some altcoin reward for that. Yeah, that's a really good question. And I have no idea how you could apply this to incentivizing network bandwidth or, um, or availability. But if, you could, if someone could figure that out, that would be really useful, I think. And I know there's a few people working on that, like Source Wi-Fi and Alfie and Mesh are two projects I know of. Kind of interesting. I mean, it's, it's definitely interesting, but given that you've, I, mean, I could just read the white paper, but given that you have already read part of it, what do you think about these two things? 
Um, firstly, that since they're proving that you have space, they probably put unique data on every section and they check sum it. And if you put something there, it's check summed, and then you you prove that you have totally unique space. Uh -huh. But by doing so, kind of as you said, for each replica, you probably have a different copy and it's encrypted differently or set differently so that it's checksum differently to prove that you have another copy. Yet, you probably want replication. So it seems extremely wasteful in terms of global storage because now we have to have, for things which could be deduplicated and could be copied multiple times and you, you could mirror it like explicitly, you now must generate another copy, right? And so like if you were to say, put a, a repo or something, repository of, of data, you have to do so much extra work to store things, right? How, what, what do you think about the way they're doing a that? Trade off, like it's not the max, most maximally efficient use of storage space. Mm -hmm. But I think it's the value of, of having a network like this is definitely. I don't know exactly like how much of a trade off it is, but I think it's probably worth it. Okay, just interesting. To make it okay, um, that and um, shoot, what else was I thinking? Uh, oh well, I forgot. As, as a video guy, I can kind of see that having people on a local network who I could be, I have masses of data, which is, you know, irreplaceable that I need to back up on a constant basis. So I can see it kind of being a useful thing, you know, in that aspect to have, to have something like that. But there's two, there's two things that I've, you know, I've shot recently that I, that, you know, I think about when it relates to this. And one is fog computing. Are you familiar with that? Fog. 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 So if you look it up, this is a whole movement in computing, which is it's like cloud computing, except, you know, like the difference between fog and a cloud is fog is when the cloud moves to the ground and spreads to the outside. And that's exactly what fog computing is about. Instead of you sending your processing up into the cloud, the processing is coming down into the edges. And they, they're thinking about this and very much in things like uh, with cars and stuff like this, where you know they need, they can't, they can't wait to, for someone else to do the computing to like know if you're going to crash into something. So you, you, you need ubiquitous processing so that you know Filecoin could be CPU coin, you know. So there's you know that aspect of it. Another thing that uh, I was at the IGF USA and they had a thing on smart networks, and the guy from from uh, Comcast talked about, you know, content, intelligent content distribution. And he said the Comcast account this thing that uh, to give every second of content an IPv6 number. There are so many IPv6 numbers that they can take a whole movie and give every, you know, little piece of this its own IPv6 address and then, like, use routing to, like, find it on the network. And I, I'm still getting my brain around this, but it's, you know, it's an interesting thing, you know, to think about, you know, that IPv6 is actually a system that you could use to identify content and, and bring into your network. Yeah, just to go touch on your point about fog computing, like, I think a big motivation of this is just like a general trend that the amount of storage space we have in the whole world is increasing like dramatically faster than the network capacity. So like this is pushing more content out to the edges of the network is like is that one way of dealing with that big change. So my, my question is about like um, you said this would encourage people to share drive space and then so use unused drive space to share it among people and then have uh, store content. So here, it's, since it's kind of like becoming a, a coin which can then be exchanged for other types of monetary things that's how you encourage people right there's a reward right. okay but as i understand there's still the question with bitcoins um whether the amount of electricity energy and uh, hardware and uh, power that you put into mining to uh, gain uh, bitcoins is still more expensive than the value of the Bitcoin itself. So in this case, isn't that also some somehow a case where you, the, 
you know, like what, what are the economics of, 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 sure. of this? And is, is it worth it to just like, because I'm thinking, oh, but then maybe somebody can like start buying uh, free space somewhere and then use that to generate money that they then change in the market and then play with the values of, 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 of the market to generate. Um, well, first of all, I think it's totally, it's fundamentally different from Bitcoin in the sense that Bitcoin relies on proof of work. So people are doing a lot of work, like using a lot of energy cycles. This is different. All the work is done up front to generate like the ability to, to say that I have this data. But after that, you're not doing a ton of work. You're just like responding to verification requests. Um, but you're not constantly doing work over and over again. So in terms of energy efficiency, it should be better. Uh, going back to what Zach said about like space efficiency, I'm not sure exactly, but there's a ton of unused capacity out there. And I think it could have like a really interesting economic effect of lowering price of storage and just utilizing our new um, space, which I think would be a good thing. Mm -hmm. And a side question, is it related to StoreJ? Don't it's, I? It's a, it's a related project, but it's totally different people. Okay. Working with it. But it's the same technology behind it, or no? No, it, it's based on IPFS. <coughs> okay. So if, if you're interested in this, definitely check out IPFS. Does the paper specifically uh, reference IPFS as a requirement for the implementation, or? Not specifically, it's, it's all based on Merkle trees. So it just uses a lot of the same concepts. I don't know if it's okay. specifically tied to IPFS. Okay. Yeah. But it's, it's fairly like basic primitive data structure. It's not like a super specialized system. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I remember it's kind of, I, I was kind of thinking something similar to what um, Julian said, which is, you know, every, kind of every year, storage goes down in price. And, you know, I'll, I'll say something untrue, but it's like half every year. It's not, but uh, let's say it is. Um, so you're kind of basing something on a coin, like a coin is being based on a thing which is having in value every year, but you want your coin to get more valuable generally because people want to get it. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, I know it's not true, but it, you know that that's. Uh, but it's going down at a rate, right? A constant rate, um, and with flash, maybe exponentially. But you know, it's kind of isn't it? It's it's a weird thing that's like self-defeating almost, right? Like you, your storage is getting cheaper, so every in a in a year from now, the coins be worth half as much because you can twi store twice as much for the that, same price. Isn't that assuming that the demand for storage is staying the same? Demand is, demand is higher, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah, I, I see what you're saying, supply, demand versus, yeah, good point as well. Uh, well, supposedly you can't compress because they would give you the unique data, right? So. Just think about media for a second. Hmm? Now you have 4K, think about just media. Mm -hmm. it, it used to have really low resolution, or standard resolution for a long time. Now yeah, you have that's, 4K. That's higher use of Right. So I think it'll be good to see how the how the other graph looks like next to this. Yeah. How is how is storage demand going up over time? Um, I mean, I'm I'm just like I just like took like a really quick like look through the white paper like what what's up there, and it you know it talks about like you know proof of storage and proof of replication, but like a, a lot of the storage that's out in there in the world right now is dedicated toward like replication and backing up. There's just so much data that. A lot of storage is just based off decentralization. Is just basically re replicating data over and over and over again and trying to prove which data is correct. In in the Filecoin scenario, whose onus is it to prove that like the data that's replicated is correct? Like how does it, like when we replic replicate data, like who defines whether or not which piece of data is actually the correct piece of data and what's corrupted or mm -hmm. not? So do you know about Merkle trees? Oh, uh, not. So this is like the fundamental like the way that this all works. Merkle trees are like, do you guys know what hashes are? Hashes are like a way of taking any amount of data and then transforming that into like a unique like string basically, a unique identifier. Um, so Merk Merkle trees are like a, a tree of hashes in which it's, each node is, each hash is like pointing to the previous one. Um, I don't know if that makes sense, but like, so these arrows represent like 
of some sort of reference. So hash one one is referencing hash one, which is referencing the top hash. So by just by checking that top hash, you could verify the integrity of everything below it. Um, so you basically, if you wanted to store some data, it would just be one hash, like 64 characters or something. And using that one hash, you could actually verify the integrity of everything, any any amount of data. Um, does that does that answer your question? I know, I know it's like kind of a big question to answer. And, but yeah, if you want to look into it, this is like, and then also that's the way IPFS works. And blockchain too. And blockchain, yeah. Git, um, BitTorrent, everything's based on Merkle trees. 